The following program has been brought to you in part by Sennheiser and the Airline Pilots Association. On this episode, we'll tell you the fate of the Christmas Day underwear bomber, how to protect yourself from this pesky insect, Emirates plans for flying in the United States, and how pilots are paying it forward. All of this and more here on The Flight Deck. Hello, I'm Sharon Barab. Welcome to The Flight Deck. The Christmas Day 2009 underwear bomber pleaded guilty to all eight counts against him during his trial in October. These charges included attempted use of a weapon of mass destruction, conspiracy to commit an act of terrorism, and possession of a firearm or destructive device. He was a passenger on Northwest Airlines Flight 253, flown by Captain Ray Miller and First Officer Stephen Stewart, service from Amsterdam to Detroit. Prosecutors say he is scheduled to be sentenced in January. Congress recently held a hearing that took a closer look at the cost, benefits, progress, and management of NextGen, the program in line to modernize the national air transportation system. ALPA President Captain Lee Moak sent members of the House Aviation Subcommittee a clear message. NextGen is important for our members. Our pilots are trained. There is equipment out there. We need to figure out a way to work together to get this timeline sped up. The association says that a modern air transportation system is necessary to position the United States to compete economically in the global air transportation arena. Captain Moak also stressed the need for properly investing in NextGen, warning that there are consequences for not setting up the system right the first time around. And that's a penalty for a lack of investment and an industry and consumers are being penalized for not having uh, an investment in NextGen with higher costs that sacrifice safety. With a price tag of somewhere between $40 billion and $160 billion, it's certainly an investment. The Advocate General of the European Court of Justice recently recommended that the court find that the European Union's emissions trading scheme is compatible with international law. The Wall Street Journal says that the opinion could spark a bigger diplomatic debate, as 20 countries, including the U.S., Japan, Russia, and India have signed a joint declaration against the emissions trading scheme. ALPA also opposes the scheme for numerous reasons, not the least of which includes there's no certainty that funds raised by the tax would actually help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Emirates, the largest A380 operator in the world, recently added flights to Seattle and Dallas. President Tim Clark told Bloomberg in an interview that it may also add other U.S. cities including Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, and Washington. According to the news report, Clark said the U.S. market could be targeted using Airbus A380 Super Jumbos, of which it has 90 on order. He also said that Emirates is looking at code shares, which would allow it to sell tickets beyond U.S. gateways. Canada's Minister of International Trade, Ed Fast, announced the expansion of the bilateral air transportation agreement between Canada and Japan on October 1. The agreement provides more possibilities for air services. It also includes greater access for Canadian airlines to Tokyo's Narita, Japan, and added flexibility for airline routings. Mr. Fast said it will also help Canadian businesses expand, compete, and succeed in priority markets around the world. Under Canada's Blue Sky policy, launched in late 2006, the government has concluded air service agreements with nearly 60 countries. Dow Jones reports that U.S. airlines are calling on the Department of Transportation to drop plans that would require them to break down all of their hidden fees. The airlines claim that producing more detailed financial reports would cost more than $300 million a year to implement. In fact, four of the largest carriers report that each of the 19 required items would add more than $1 million in administrative costs. Alpa pilots are flooding Capitol Hill to meet with the offices of 250 U.S. Senators and Representatives on the issues that matter to them most. From FAA reauthorization to the pending pilot fatigue rule, lawmakers are getting an earful from pilots in uniform. Alpa President Captain Moak says he's pleased with this mass advocacy effort and has plans for the Government Affairs Department to do another push soon. If you are an Alpa pilot, 
you can participate in the association's advocacy efforts too. Simply log into the members only site and send a call to action to your legislators today. Up next, a report that will change the way you check into your next hotel room. Stick around for all that you need to know about what scientists are calling the pest of the 21st century. From the first time I boarded a commercial plane as its pilot, I've embraced the responsibility I have to the safety of my passengers and crew. And I have the best flight gear, even the headset, certified for commercial duty. It lets me concentrate on the task at hand, making this the safest flight my passengers will ever have. The feature-packed HMEC 26 provides long wearing comfort and more than 18 dB of noise reduction. Try the HMEC 26 on your next flight and hear the difference for yourself. Hi, I'm Brendan from Rochester, New York. I'd like to ask a pilot, how do pilots navigate? Brendan, we have many different ways to navigate and pilots always use a combination of methods. We have GPS, which is satellite-based. Then we also have ground-based navigation aids. There are stations at various places on the ground that emit radio signals, which the aircraft can receive. We can navigate from station to station along Victor Airways or jet routes. Those are what you might have heard of as the highways in the sky. Another way that we can navigate is to get directions from air traffic control. Sometimes they'll just tell us, fly a certain heading and so we'll fly that way. And finally, the most basic way, but a very effective way when we're close to the ground is just pilotage, which is visual navigation. If we have the airport in sight, we fly to it. Sometimes we'll follow a river or another aircraft if we have that in sight. According to the National Pest Management Association, one out of five Americans has had a bed bug infestation or knows someone who has. Clearly, these little critters are back and on the rise. Here's Alpa correspondent Kimberly Seitz with measures you can take to avoid becoming the next victim. You may have seen them on your trips. They're reddish brown, small, about the size of an apple seed, and they like to hide in the cracks and crevices of mattresses and box springs. They're bed bugs. And the blood sucking insects are sweeping the nation. The good news? Bed bugs don't typically transmit diseases. They tend to gently bite people while they're sleeping, creating some redness and itching. The bad news? They're easy to transport. Bed bugs love clothes and easily wind up in your suitcase. So what can you do to protect yourself? Next time you check into a hotel room, peel back the bed sheets and look at the seams of the mattress. This is a popular daytime hangout for bed bugs. Look for tiny black spots on the headboard and on your bed and nightstand. Keep your luggage and coat off of the bed and off of the floor. Put your suitcase on a luggage stand, a table, or even in the bathroom. But don't throw it on the couch, which could be infested too. If you see signs of bed bugs, alert the front desk and request another room. When you get back from your trip, wash all your clothes, not just the dirty stuff, and vacuum out your suitcase. Wrap items you can't wash, such as books and electronics, with plastic and throw them into the freezer for a few hours. Freezers kill bed bugs too. And finally, remember to report the incident to your hotel committee chairman so that he or she can track the problem facility. If you follow these simple steps, you'll sleep tight and won't let the bed bugs bite. I'm Kimberly Seitz, on the flight deck. Members of ALPA's Education Committee are paying it forward with the next generation of pilots at aeronautical universities across the nation. Several pilot volunteers recently spent their time recruiting approximately 120 students for the ALPA ACE Club on the campus of Emory-Riddle, Daytona Beach. The ALPA ACE Club provides aviation students and educators with the opportunity to learn more about the piloting profession from professional ALPA pilots. Student ACE Club members enjoy exclusive information from their union including select airline pilot magazines, ALPA Airlines pay rates and hiring requirements, and networking opportunities with ALPA pilots. If you know someone who might be interested in becoming an ALPA ACE, direct them to the cleartodream.org website where they'll find all the information they need to land the job of their dreams. Here's a taste of what you'll see. Welcome to the Airline Pilots Association International's education website, cleartodream.org, considered the informational resource for future professional pilots looking toward the sky for a challenging and rewarding profession. 
Every day that airline pilots go to work, they find themselves in a profession of pride that demands excellence, discipline, and attention to detail. Whether operating a turboprop aircraft or a wide-body jet, airline pilots are responsible for passenger and crew member lives with every takeoff and every landing. If you're looking for a profession with a different type of office, greater responsibility, and exciting opportunities, then becoming an airline pilot might be the right option for you. To learn more, browse our site and join the Alpha Ace Club, where you can collect exclusive information from professional airline pilots about what it's really like flying the line for a living. Now it's time again to watch and win. First, congratulations John Rosenberg for making it to the next round. John will now be entered into the grand prize drawing along with five other randomly selected winners for a chance to win a Sennheiser headset. Finally, on to today's question. What two U.S. cities did Emirates add to its service? Visit our website to submit the answer for your chance to win a Sennheiser headset. Thank you for watching the Flight Deck. If you have any feedback about this episode, please let us know at flightdeck at alpha.org. Thanks again, and I'll see you here next month on the Flight Deck.